I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll help you make your colors pop by using a technique called subtractive color. I'll demonstrate the process in Lightroom later in the video. I'll show you how you can use Photoshop, Darktable, and Raw Therapy to achieve the same effect. But first, what is subtractive color? Subtractive color is the property in light where when two colors that are opposite each other are added together, they cancel each other out. They subtract from each other and we end up with no color. So for example, in this diagram, if I were to take yellow and add it to blue, you can see that the result is black. If I take cyan and add that to red, the result is black. All the color is removed. And if I take magenta and add that to green, the result is black. All the colors are removed. The colors negate each other out. They subtract from each other. This is why the color balancing tools in many photo applications have sliders that deal with these opposites. So blue and yellow, cyan and red, and magenta and green are all opposite from each other. So to demonstrate this effect, I have a rainbow here in Photoshop. When I, I'll start with this rainbow and I want to add a color. So the color that I want to add is yellow. So I'll just lay this over top. It's just a solid fill layer that's split in half so we can see the bottom with no effect and the top half when we're adding in yellow. So what I want to do is I want to take the opacity down to zero to negate the effect so we're not seeing this layer at all. Then I will change the blend mode to multiply. So now that we're multiplying applying the effect of adding yellow. So now watch what happens to the various colors when I increase the opacity. Specifically, watch what happens to the complementary color of blue as I increase the yellow. So we'll start to bring in the yellow a little bit at a time. It goes higher and higher. And as we do, the blues are diminished and diminished until we get to 100%. And you can see that the blues are completely gone. The, the blue has been entirely subtracted from the rainbow while the colors closer to yellow appear to be unaffected but the colors closest to blue have been tweaked to pull the blue out and therefore cyan without blue becomes green and magenta without blue becomes red so this is an example of how we've used one color to completely negate the impact of another color okay so how does this relate to infrared photography let's take a look at a photo and begin to edit so we can see what the impact of subtractive color could be so we'll start with this photo the first thing I'm going to do is pick a profile if uh, you have never created a profile for Lightroom I'll link to a video that will show you how you can create a profile so that you can do all of your editing right within Lightroom without having to take a round trip to Photoshop. So I'm going to pick a profile that I've created. We'll pick this one and I'm going to pick a white balance. We'll just pick something maybe off the trees to get a bit of a white balance. Now, in this case, um, let's say that I want, you know, this creates a good separation of the sky and the foliage, but maybe I want a little bit more color in this image. So let me take the slider and I'm going to go towards the the blue side, which will increase the amount of yellow in the foliage. So we'll do that. I'm going to hit auto just to give me a quick set of levels. We'll go into tone curve and do a quick strong contrast. So that'll really pump up my contrast a bit. We're kind of heading in the direction that I want, but maybe I want even more color in this image. So I'll go into HSL. Let's go into the hue. I'll grab the picker here and I'm going to take these this color this yellow and I'm going to amplify it into kind of a purplish pinkish tone maybe do that with the blues as well so we're really bringing up the pinks here and then maybe with the sky I want to change that a little bit crazy and get into a teal color there okay so I really like uh, the direction that this image is heading but but the challenge that I'm having is that if you look at the bark of the tree it's picking up all of these sort of magenta tones that exist within the foliage. And I would really rather that the bark be more neutral so that it kind of stands off. So there's a separation between the neutral tones of the bark and the foliage. But right now it's, it's got all of this magenta tint. So what can I do about this? Well, I could take the adjustment brush and I could go, you know, paint in all of these branches and stuff. Well, that would be a real time consuming task. And I've certainly done that for certain images, but that's that takes too much time. What I can do instead is use subtractive color. And I'm going to do that in Lightroom with split toning. So we'll go into split toning. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go under highlights and we'll click on the, the color box and bring up highlights. So what I want to do is click anywhere in the highlights area 
in, in, the, in the rainbow area and I'm going to drag into the image. And what you'll notice is now that I've dragged the picker, I'm still holding my mouse down, now that I've dragged the picker, it's identifying colors that I'm rolling over in the picker. So you can see the little box moving within the split toning rainbow window to see what the colors I've selected. This will allow me to select the color that's actually exists in the bark. So let's go ahead and pick a color here so you can see the hue I've got is 350 degrees. That will be helpful information. So I'm going to take the saturation and I'm going to take that to zero because I really don't need to do anything. The highlights right now, I really need this number. If we have 360 degrees of color, then the, the way to get to the opposite color is always going to be to either add or subtract 180 degrees. So in this case, 350 minus 180 will be 170. So if I go down to the shadows and these magenta tones exist mostly in the shadows, so I'm going to affect the shadows. So down in the shadows, I will put in 170. I'll just type that in directly because I know the value I want to hit. Let's 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 zoom in a bit on this image and pull it right in so we can see these tones as I make this adjustment. So you can see the magenta tones here. So now as I bring in the shadows, and remember this is going to be 170, so this is going to be a, a bit of a teal color that I'm adding, but watch what happens to the bark as I increase the saturation. So increasing the saturation actually doesn't really add much color. It mostly negates the teal that existed above. So let me zoom back out so you can see it affect everywhere. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of blending. You're going to see a little bit more magenta in places and a little bit more teal in places, and that's all right. I just wanted to get rid of that overall cast. Now, if you like, you could go back to the highlights, and now that we know what our highlight value is, you could add back in a little bit of highlights to kind of counter that and suit to taste. Uh, again, I don't want to overpower the bark too much, but I can play around with this so I could really pump up the color here, and I can play around with the colors in the shadows to, to offset it, to negate it. And then I will have an image where I have this popping color in the foliage and yet the tree, the character of the tree remains more neutral. So the colors stand off from each other. So that's the effect that I'm looking for. Okay, so let's take a look at another image here that I've nearly complete with the edit on. I've got really nice colors everywhere. I've got nice orange foliage. The sky is a great color. Everything looks good, but there's this orange cast over all of the rocks that really kind of dominates the image. And I want the focus to not be so much on the rocks and more on the tree itself and on the foliage, but I've got to remove this cast that exists on the rocks and I can do that uh, with uh, split toning. So what I can do is go, same thing, I can open up the highlights, click anywhere in the box and then drag over here to figure out what the, what the value is that I'm looking for. So let's say I take a value of 27. Okay, so that's the hue that I have. And then I can drop the saturation to zero because I don't want any saturation here. Now I can add 27 to uh, 180. This is where a little bit of math is gonna come into play and that will give me 207. So now that's the value I have. So now if I increase the saturation, if you look at the rocks, you'll see that it will start to negate that orange color. And what's really nice is because I'm just affecting the shadows, it's not, it's having a slight effect on the tree, but it's really gonna only affect the, the darker portions of the image. It's not gonna affect the highlights that I wanna retain. And now you can see I have this bluish teal color here. And what I can do is sort of do a white balance in a sense on the rock. If I go way up, the rocks will start to take on a blue cast. And if I come back, I'm going to have an orange cast and I can play around with this to, to get the look that I'm looking for. Now, of course, be aware it's going. this is going to affect your entire image. So in, I want to make sure that the result I'm having is going to be positive to the rest of the image. If I don't want that, you're going to have to use a different tool set, you know, like an adjustment filter or something. So make sure that that works. In this case, you can see I'm having, I'm adding a lot of blue to the water, which is actually a nice effect as well. That's not really the dominant thing. It's these rocks in the front I want to deal with. So now that I've got that done, I can decide whether or not I want to go back and add some additional color to the highlights or not. By subtracting the colors that I don't want in the shadows, then I can help the the colors in the highlights that I really want people to focus on, where I want your eye to see, I can help those colors to really pop. Okay, let's head over to Photoshop now and see how we would do this in Photoshop. I'm going to open up the same image in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's pick this profile and I'll just do a quick auto. We'll do some of the some of the similar steps that we did. Add a bit of punch with the tone curve and I've got to get a white balance. So let me pick a white balance here. We'll get on the foliage. But again, I'm going to I'm going to slide the I'm going to override the the picker and slide to get a little bit more of a stronger color. 
uh, which is great for the foliage, but again, it's, leave, it's creating that color cast that I'm seeing um, on the branches, and that's what I want to deal with. So let's go ahead and open this image in Photoshop from Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, so I've got the image open. We'll hit Control Zero to bring it up to full size. Now, the, the tool that you're going to use in Photoshop, there isn't really a split toning per se, but we have actually more powerful tools in Photoshop. We can go down to the adjustment layers, select adjustment layers, and color balance. This is what we were talking about earlier with the color wheel and, and how the colors offset each other. And you can see here that we have cyan versus red, magenta versus green, and yellow versus blue. And what's really nice about color balancing tools is they they will allow you to attack a specific tone. So unlike split tone, which is typically just highlights and shadows, what's really nice about color balance is you also get the midtones as well, so you can go after those. So let's start with the shadows because these are the, the tree trunk is darker colors. So let's start here and I'm gonna pull some of the red out by uh, drifting towards the cyan. And you can see that's already having a big effect on the coloring. I also, I think I'm gonna pull a little bit of the magenta out by going to green. You can quickly see when you've gone too far, but look at that, that really has a big impact and really sort of neutralizes the tree trunks there. So that looks really good. And of course with the color balance, I can switch from shadows to midtones, and I can do some of the same effect on the midtones. Now, I'm probably gonna do less in the midtones because the most dramatic results were in the shadows, but in the midtones, I can take cyan and add a little bit of cyan and maybe just a smidge towards the green as well. But, but probably a lighter touch on the midtones than you would in the shadows. So in Photoshop, use color balance to make some of these changes globally and to make them very quickly. Okay, now let's head over to Darktable. Darktable is a really good raw processor that's a free open source program. I highly recommend it. It uh, does really great rendering and the colors that it produces are pretty amazing. Uh, the accuracy of the raw processing is really good. In this case, I've sort of deliberately set the white balance off for the sake of this demonstration, but you can see in the white balance, I would have the controls there to modify them and set that. And the tool we wanna do for color balancing in dark table is in the color group and it is called color balance and you have a lot of controls here so we've got the the shadows the midtones and the highlights just like we did in photoshop but we've got a lot of control here okay so let me use the color picker that's here in dark table and i'll pick a spot on the screen and that will look at that i mean that it, it picked up that tone immediately and you can see it, it basically neutralized it. It set the hue for me, it set the 180, so it set a value, and then it automatically subtracted 180, and then it automatically picked a saturation to completely negate that. I can pick another spot and it'll do the same thing, and look at that, so I can completely remove those tones almost automatically just with the uh, the color picker and dark table. Could also go in and make adjustments to the midtones or highlights. I can manually make adjustments if I want to adjust these, but this is a really powerful tool, so I highly recommend dark table. And then let's also take a look at raw therapy. Raw therapy is another free open source image editor raw processor and raw therapy has some really powerful color tools as well. So we've got the same image open and if I go undo the color group, there's a second called color toning. Within color toning, there's a, a method which gives you, boy, a whole variety of options. The, the, the amount of color processing that you can do in raw therapy is very impressive. We're just going to look right now at the color balance, which gives us very similar controls to what we just saw in Photoshop and Darktable. So I can come into the shadows and I can maybe pull out, uh, let's see, we'll start pulling out some of that magenta going to the green, that'll help us to neutralize the tree trunk. Uh, we can do it in the midtones as well. Maybe not so much. And then in the shadows, I'll tr try to pull out a little bit of the blues. We'll go to the, no, we'll go pull out the reds and go to the blues a little bit. So you just gotta have a bit of a careful touch there. And I can do the same in the midtones. Okay, so there you go. So that's a quick look at how to do subtractive color in Lightroom, Photoshop, dark table and raw therapy. It's a very powerful tool that can allow you to go in and target specific colors that exist in the in your shadows or in your midtones and then use the opposite color to neutralize those to subtract those colors out and get to more of a neutral tone. That'll help your the primary colors that you want to focus on pop and create a lot of great contrast in your images. 
If you have any questions about this process or if you have any suggestions for other topics relating to infrared photography that you'd like to see covered, please leave a comment in the section below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Thanks.